Idahoans and visitors everywhere affected by these snowstorms. <clears throat> Today, <clears throat> as we are here, there are people in southeast Colorado who continue to help those folks on the eastern plains recover from that damage. That's the kind of selflessness that the public servants of this state have and that you really can't capture with the pomp and circumstance that we're privileged to today. We owe them our deepest thanks. I stand before you on the steps of this Capitol, and I get the privilege of looking up to these majestic mountains in front of me. They provided inspiration to so many Coloradans and really to so many Americans. The mountains symbolize what Colorado is all about, about hope and about opportunity, about taking risks and overcoming challenges. Colorado is about bold ideas and brave actions. We look up to those mountains, not down. We look ahead, not back. So I stand before you today looking out at our future. I stand before you eager to fulfill the Colorado promise. And I'm proud to say that I'm here for the people of Colorado. I grew up on a small farm in Arapahoe County. There were 12 children in our family. And to put it mildly, we were, not, we were people of modest means. We had wonderful influences in our lives, not the least of which is my mom, Ethel. We experienced tough times, but we were people of faith. We were taught to believe, to believe in the promise of a better tomorrow. We were taught that we were all in this together, that each of us has a role in making tomorrow a better day. I look around me today, and as I stand here, having taken this oath, I see once again the power of ordinary people believing in the possible. My political awakening really came when I was 11 years old. And two months apart, Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy were taken from us by assassin's bullets. They were both bold, daring men. They were people with a vision. For me, they represented hope as well, a hope for all people. They saw the path to a better tomorrow. They had the strength of their convictions they imagined, as we imagine today, a brighter future for all. Robert Kennedy once said, the future is not a gift. It is an achievement. Every generation helps make its own future. This is the essential challenge of the present. I speak often about the Colorado Promise. The Colorado Promise is simple. It is about making a better future, a better future for our children and our grandchildren. It's about hope. It's about finding the common ground for the common good. It's about finding the strength in all of us, in rural and urban, in West Slope, in Eastern Plains. It's a promise of hope for everyone in this diverse state of ours. Think about the early settlers in Colorado. Think about the frontier farmers who first tilled the soil, the prospectors who first dug for gold here, the ranch families who came together to build the first rural schools so their children could learn. They were ambitious and daring. They were all fulfilling their own version of the Colorado promise. I report back to you from thousands of Coloradans I've spoken with over the past two years. I report to you that we remain true to that legacy. We are still a bold and a daring people with a frontier spirit, hearty and well-meaning, brimming with hope about what lies ahead. Brimming with hope about what lies ahead. Our task now in this, the 21st century, is to seize that sense of hope that we share with so many Coloradans and to fulfill a new Colorado promise. Our task today is to build on the strengths and successes of the past. Our task is to think big, 
to be bold and to take risks, to ask why not. I believe the Coloradoans are up to this task. We won't accomplish it all in a single year or even four years or eight years. It's a journey. It's a journey where we are moving forward and that moving forward is vital to the generations that follow us. So where does our 21st century journey begin? Let's start by being bolder than any other state when it comes to implementing renewable energy. Let's commit right now to making Colorado a national leader, a world leader in renewable energy. Let's cre create a new energy economy right here in Colorado. Thank you. Let's fulfill the Colorado promise together by giving our children opportunities and our employers the best educated workforce in the nation. Let's commit today, all of us, to dropping, to reducing the dropout rate in this state and to closing the achievement gap for the kids of this state who go to the schools in this state. Let's fulfill the Colorado promise by ending the crisis of the uninsured and enacting comprehensive health care reform in the state of Colorado. Let's fulfill the Colorado promise by creating good jobs and fixing our transportation system. Let's fulfill the Colorado promise by being stubborn stewards for our land, our air, our water, and our wildlife. Let's fulfill the Colorado promise by living up to our part of the social compact. Such an important part of who we are as a state and really in America who we are as a people is the social compact. It's that covenant that says government exists for the people but for all people. It exists to provide legitimate public functions. It exists to ensure that we take care of seniors that we take care of the disabled. It exists that we take care of those who struggle mightily. <laughs> Finally, let's fulfill the Colorado promise by setting aside the overheated rhetoric of partisan politics so we can move forward together, so we can build a more efficient, innovative government that is careful with your money a government that serves the people and isn't self-serving. Let's commit to that kind of a government as we move forward in the 21st century. I believe we have a rare opportunity. Over the next four years, I believe we can bridge the partisan divide and move all of Colorado forward. I believe that this is now about hope and about unity that it's not about Republicans and Democrats, that it's not about the left versus the right. It's about those here in Colorado who can lead the way for the country. It is about those of us who truly hope. To those who are still cynical about the legitimate role of government and where it can intersect and improve people's lives, we promise a reason to hope. We will govern well. We will govern to solve problems. We will govern responsibly. We will govern for the people of Colorado, and we will govern to fulfill the Colorado promise. I said that we were from a family of people who are people of And so today, I close my remarks with my own prayer. I pray that we have wisdom. I pray that we have humility. And I pray that we have an ongoing sense of justice that responds to all people in this state and all people who struggle. 
Thank you so much for being a part of this, and God bless you all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in giving another hand to our new governor, Bill Ritter, our new lieutenant governor, Barbara O'Brien, and their families. <laughs> 